Bing Crosby was one of the most celebrated, influential, and beloved American entertainers of the 20th century. He's best known for his hit recordings of songs like White Christmas and Don't Fence Me In. He was also a very accomplished actor, starring in films such as The Road Series alongside Bob Hope and Dorothy L'Amour and Going My Way, which earned him an Academy Award for Best Actor in 1944. Just as his career was starting to pick up steam, he married the love of his life, actress and singer Dixie Lee, in 1930. Dixie Lee was born Wilma Winifred Wyatt in Harriman, Tennessee on November 4, 1909. Her father's name was Evan Wyatt and her mother was Nora Scarborough. After her family moved to Chicago when she was still a teenager, she attended and graduated from Sen High School. While she was in her late teens, she started singing and performing and even won a talent contest put on by the city of Chicago. In college, she chose the stage name Dixie Lee and signed a contract with Fox in 1920. 1920 was a big year for her in more ways than one. Not only did she star in several films, but that was also the year she met her husband-to-be, Bing Crosby. Just a year later, they were married. Together, they helped raise four children, all boys. Unfortunately, between the two of them, only one of their careers was going to take off. Bing's fame grew so quickly, Lee decided it was best for her and her family to stay home as a homemaker to raise the kids. Crosby's life was often lonely. Lee officially retired from showbiz in 1935, not long after she gave birth to her boys, Gary, Philip, Lindsay, and Dennis. In 1936, she recorded two songs with Bing, A Fine Romance and The Way You Look Tonight. But after that, Lee virtually disappeared out of the public eye entirely. Once she was out of the spotlight, she hit the bottle pretty heavily. While Bing was out gallivanting across the globe on tour with his music and acting in films, his wife was back home, sad, alone, and drinking herself to death. According to the 2014 PBS documentary, Bing Crosby Rediscovered, Lee's drinking negatively impacted both her marriage and her relationship with her children, especially with the twins Philip and Dennis. It's suspected the twin boys were subject to fetal alcohol syndrome based upon examinations of their physical appearance. Sadly, Lee never managed to get a handle on her drinking. She died of ovarian cancer on November 1, 1952, just a few days before her 43rd birthday. What about Bing? Bing Crosby was born in Tacoma, Washington in 1903. He was the fourth of seven children. He first discovered his love for music when he was just six years old, when he purchased his first phonograph player. He led a relatively normal life in middle-class America for a while. By the time he was in college, Crosby had already abandoned his desire to become a lawyer and instead set his sights on finding success in the entertainment industry. In 1930, he landed his first film role in King of Jazz, and shortly thereafter, he launched his very own radio show, which drew in roughly 50 million listeners at its height. Despite all the success that ensued, his life was filled with highs and lows, successes and failures, and his fair share of hardships. The public saw him as their A-list golden boy, always topping the charts with hit after hit, but his private life was tumultuous and always had some shade of tragic. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Laryngitis is said to have aided his career. Bing's early career in the mid-twenties saw him performing in a group called the Rhythm Boys. It was around this time his love affair with jazz really started to take hold. He developed his scat singing skills and honed his jazz-style phrasing. By the 1930s, copycats were already popping up trying to make a buck off his signature sound. You even had legends like Perry Como and Dean Martin going out of their way to imitate Bing's unmistakable style. Back then, everyone wanted to sound like Bing Crosby. You were either a high Crosby and pulled it off, or a low Crosby and just sounded like a second-rate Johnny come lately. Something happened, though, when Bing was rising to the top that almost derailed all his plans. A battle with laryngitis nearly ruined his career. If you listen to any of his early records from the 20s or 30s, you can hear a distinct hoarseness in his voice. The bout with laryngitis left him with a node of scar tissue on one of his vocal cords. In 1931, Bing's doctors told him he should stay put and rest for a while. But instead of heeding their advice, he refused and continued to sing, drink to excess, smoke, and do further damage to his body. 
In the mid-30s, Bing's voice became lower as a direct result of his lifestyle choices. After losing his ability to hit high notes, he stopped scatting and instead focused on ballads with more widespread marketable appeal. Just like that, he became what some called the voice of the nation. In a roundabout way, the laryngitis actually helped his career. That being said, his newfound popularity had disastrous effects on his home life. Thirteen years of marriage went up in flames. After Dixie Lee retired from her acting career, the Crosby family moved to Toluca Lake, Los Angeles, to raise their kids on a beautiful estate sprawling across four acres. Tragedy struck in 1943 when a fire completely destroyed their family home and the majority of the personal possessions that they had collected in the 13 years of marriage leading up to it. Estimated damages sustained by that blaze were put somewhere in the $250,000 range. Adjusted for inflation, that would equate to about $3.8 million today. The fire started after Lee and her sons were taking down Christmas tree decorations. A short circuit created a spark that ignited the entire tree in a matter of seconds. The house was completely ablaze in minutes. The damages from that event were catastrophic. Crosby lost all of his trophies, awards, and all of his master musical recordings. Fortunately, no one was killed in the fire. But Dixie Lee never really recovered from the trauma she experienced. Bing Crosby was an absent father. We already touched on how Dixie would drink herself into a stupor every time Bing left the house. Their kids would often come home to find their mother passed out on the kitchen floor. That's scarring for anyone to witness. But Bing was also somewhat culpable in the neglect of his family. Speaking with Barbara Walters in 1977, Bing acknowledged he wasn't much a part of his boys' lives when they were young. He was always so busy, making three or four films a year, hosting his radio show, recording his albums, and all the while his boys were shipped off to boarding schools. Crosby was also obsessed with the idea that his kids would for some reason grow up corrupted. His son Gary Crosby recalls how his dad always used to say he didn't want any Hollywood kids in the house. By the time he married his second wife, Catherine Grant, he found a bit more balance between juggling his career and his family. Once his work became less of a priority, his relationship with his flesh and blood greatly improved. But was he a dysfunctional father? Throughout his life, Crosby always presented an image of himself to the world that was keenly crafted and idyllic. His second wife, Catherine Crosby, summed it up when she said, everyone in the world was in love with Bing Crosby. After his death in 1977, his public image took a major hit after his oldest son Gary published a tell-all memoir called Going My Own Way. In the book, Gary describes his father's abusive tendencies in depth. The public's perception of Bing's character would be forever tarnished. Even though Gary's younger brother, Philip, denied the claims made in the book, the damage was done. Bing Crosby's One Big Regret Regardless of whether the claims in Gary's book were true, there's one thing readers can take away from the controversial book. Bing Crosby had a terrible way of expressing his emotions. This is something Barbara Walters touched on in that 1977 interview as well. When she asked him about his emotions and his reported lack of ability to express them, Bing shrugged off the question and called himself a surface fella. According to his wife Catherine, by the time his son Harry was four, he had already replaced hugging him with shaking his hand. Shortly after he passed away in August of 1977, Bing's youngest boy, Nathaniel, gave an interview with The Express where he shared his father's last moments while having a heart attack on the golf course. Instead of telling his son he loved him, Bing's last words were simply something to the effect of, that was a great game of golf, fellas. But Nathaniel wasn't surprised by this. Never once in his life did Bing tell any of his children he loved them. That just wasn't something that was in his vernacular. The world lost a legend in 1977 when Bing Crosby was taken out by that heart attack, but he had already effectively made his mark on the worlds of film and music. Showbiz asks a lot from you, and when you're trying to balance those obligations with family life, something always suffers. For Bing's wife, Dixie Lee, her health was that sacrifice, and their children had to grow up without a father. If you had the chance, would you want to be a star, knowing full well all the risks involved? Or are you content with your life outside of the limelight? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.